Today, we're fact checking the fact checkers. We're going to talk about PolitiFact today. It's a big organization, does a lot of fact checking. PolitiFact. Who is PolitiFact? Hey, this is who PolitiFact is. By the way, um, we're going to talk about PolitiFact in its parent organization. It's, it's, uh, PolitiFact itself is part of this Pointner Center. So Pointner announces the Center for Ethics and Leadership aims to evaluate facts-based expression and civil discourse. I had to go to the Wayback Machine to find this out, but the center was made possible by a $5 million grant from Craig Newmark Philanthropies. Uh, who is Craig Newmark? Well, that's Craig right down there. If you've ever used Craig's List, you know what Craig is. That's Craig's List down there. And of course, they earn a lot of money, like five, six $600 million a year flows in from their advertising um, section there where people advertise jobs and bicycles and, and things like that. So at any rate, uh, this was in February of 2019, the Pointer Institute, global nonprofit dedicated to excellence in journalism, uh, awarded that grant, the largest single grant to Pointer in their history. So five million bucks helped them get started. And PolitiFact sits under that. PolitiFact is a part of that Pointer Institute. And so what is, who is PolitiFact? Well, glad you asked. Managing editor is Katie Sanders here. Managing editor and let's see, overseas a lot of things here. And so Katie has a lot of roles here, but one of the things she doesn't have, because she's got a graduate degree in English and journalism, doesn't have a science background. Just like to point that out, because if you are fact-checking scientific articles, if you're fact-checking technology, you kind of want somebody who's got that background to make sure they know fact from fiction, or they at least have a, a decent landscape to know what it is they're evaluating. So Katie's heading this whole thing up and she doesn't have a science background. And we've also got Aaron. Aaron is clocked in here with his uh, own background. What's Aaron up to? He is, um, let's see, what's his background down here? Uh, well, he teaches misinformation and disinformation tactics with a focus on empowering citizens with more accurate information. A little light, but um, checking him out, I didn't see any science background in Aaron's background. That's okay. You're the executive director. All you need to do is have people on staff who have that background, of course. And just finishing it out, Angie here is the top of the leadership structure. So now we know what PolitiFact is all about. This is the editor-in-chief. So if you have a problem with the way uh, PolitiFact has fact-checked stuff, Angie and Aaron and Katie. Those are the people who are responsible for this. I like to put the faces to this whole thing because it's not PolitiFact has said this like it's like, you know, the Vatican has said something. There are people behind these things. I think we should know who these people are. We, you know, it helps us establish that sometimes people make mistakes. Sometimes they have biases. Sometimes they don't even know what their own biases are. Sometimes they're just people being people. Sometimes they don't want to lose their job because, you know, they, um, they, they understand which way the political winds are blowing, all of that. So Angie, uh, she was a reporter on a team that did win a 2009 Pulitzer Prize. That's an awesome thing to do on for national reporting she's on the advisory board of the ifcn the international fact check network so angie's pretty high up in this whole story got a master's degree in journalism masters of library science undergraduate degree is from plan to liberal arts program at unisex austin um okay so that's that's angie that's the whole leadership team so i dug through the entire PolitiFact staff. And if somebody's got an orange slashy, that means they don't have any science in their training, in their background, anywhere in their bio or their degree. All right. So there is one person on there. Victoria actually has uh, an undergraduate degree in, an, in a biological science. So there is one person on staff at PolitiFact, and that's Victoria, who does have something of a science background. So I want to talk about how important it is what happens with these gatekeepers who are who are busy telling us what's true, what's not true, separating it out? And they put these really strong pronouncements out. We're going to take a look at the most recent time I got fact-checked by PolitiFact. It was pretty recently, so we'll go there. But first, before I do, just remember, if you ever can't find me here or you're wondering, it seems like I've gone a little silent because of things like that happening down there. Hey, it happens. Um, you can always find me at these places here. Obviously, at my website, Peak Prosperity, there's how you can follow me on Twitter, on Rumble, Sovereign, Sovereign.media is like saying Sovereign.com. That .media is just an extension. It's a great place 
site being put up by Ben Swan and his team are at Odyssey. That's where you can follow me. And as well, if you want to be absolutely sure that you don't miss anything that I'm doing, come on over, become a subscriber at Peak Prosperity. Join the amazing tribe of people. Help support what we do. That's fab. Or if you just want to get our free newsletter, stop on by, give us your email, and we will be sending you an update on the content that we have. And we have a lot of free content and a lot of content for our members. Peak Insider are most popular because I put up pretty much three to five extra pieces per week on the things that I'm seeing out there. All right, let's go here. I got PolitiFact checked. Let's take a peek at what happened. So that was the title of a, of a video I put out recently, and that was back in April of 2022. I'll let you read that title right there. I was just, I was just going over a study that had come out and it was in Lancet, right? And it was literally just Danish researchers literally just looking at the RCT trial data from Pfizer, Moderna, J&J, &J, and AstraZeneca. And it was just looking at that trial data. That's it. That's all it was doing. And of course, it came up with, um, that was the headline that I came up with because that's actually what the study showed was that there wasn't an all cause mortality benefit, which was the thing that was the point I was working very hard to make, which was, Hey, if we're doing these interventions, it's great to look at what happens at a micro scale in terms of that particular disease. But aren't we actually interested public health standpoint at what's happening in total? My answer is yes. That's what we would care about more than anything. Any public health intervention has to be on balance and in total you're weighing the positives and the negatives for that particular adventure, right? So um, keeping people at home has a positive, has some negatives. You want to weigh those very carefully. That's what this study was doing. It was looking at all-cause mortality. So Samantha Putterman was the fact checker who, who hit me up on that. By the way, Samantha doesn't have any science in her background. Did an okay job trying to uh, get through this as best she could, I think. Um, but... Uh, let's just dive right into it. I'm not going to read the summary of it. Let's go into it. So this is uh, Samantha, and she's got majored in journalism and media studies. And here was the setup. Um, they said, you know, the video adds that by contrast, the adenovirus vector things there do show a very positive mortality benefit from COVID, and intriguingly, even from non-COVID deaths. That That's true. They pulled that quote out of my, that's great. That's the quote. The video features Chris Martinson, a former pharmaceutical financial analyst. I've never been one of those. So um, I'm going to fact check the fact checkers. Submit. <laughs> you got that totally wrong. Um, I've never been one of those. I don't even know where you would get some information like that. It's not, not part of my bio anywhere. Uh, founder of Peak Prosperity, a website that appears to be devoted to sharing concepts from a book he authored. In part, that's not entirely inaccurate. It's not entirely the case. Uh, this video was flagged as part of Facebook's efforts to combat false news and misinformation on its news feed. Read more about our partnership with Facebook. So I clicked that link and you can't read anything about their partnership with Facebook on that page. Doesn't talk about it at all, but glad for the link. Uh, PolitiFact reached out to Peak Prosperity for comment, but did not hear back. Uh, it's true. We, we got an email that came in through a general channel. It sat in a general channel email folder for a week while we get to these uh, info at Peak Prosperity sort of gets to us, but not that quickly. So at any rate, nobody reached out to me by Twitter, by my phone, by my personal email, by um, other channels. So I'm going to say the effort expended reaching out was was kind of light, um, wasn't all that strong. And we did, uh, it was the reach out came. And then when we backtracked, we found that about two days passed between the reach out and this article being published. So there wasn't a lot of time there to really respond. Now, this was the episode here, uh, just so you can find it. And that was the way I framed it, which is actually, I'll stand by every word of that. And this was a conclusionary chart that came from that Lancet study. So anybody who's, you know, trying to fact check or review this, I'd remind you, this is a Lancet study. And uh, what was completely obvious from this was that the overall mortality was a zero. There was no benefit for these things here, whereas there was a mortality benefit here. Now, if you just focused on these things here, the COVID-19 deaths, there was a benefit here because anything to this side of the line is a benefit and anything on this side is not a benefit. Um, these had a better um, benefit, but here 
oops, this is on the wrong side of the line, and here, this is on the wrong side of the line. And when you sum all of that up, it comes out to this data point right here, which is a big fat goose egg. So there it is, as compared to these um, other ones, the adenovirus, uh, these came out um, very strongly positive. That's what I said. So that got, that's what got uh, fact-checked. And so by focusing only on COVID deaths, I believe a major error has been committed. There's, remember, uh, in a prior episode, I talked about there are two types of sins that the media can commit. A sin of commission, that's where they flat out get something wrong or they lie, or a sin of omission. And this is where they're not giving context or they're overlooking something or they're just not reporting on something. So I think we've got a sin of omission here, and it reads out like this. So... Um, this is, again, from the article that was written in PolitiFact and by um, this woman right here, Samantha. And so if we look at this, um, so, da, 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 you know, this, just sort of reviewing the whole thing. Um, the, and then they say that the authors of the Lancet study, the authors concluded that the two types of things differed significantly with respect to overall mortality. That's what the authors of the study concluded. So I was like repeating that conclusion for people. But, <laughs> there's that word, but when looking at COVID-19 mortality rates specifically, the picture changes. Well, but that, that was okay, but that's not what this study was about. It was asking the question about overall. Why would you focus it back down to one tiny piece and say, ha ah, ha, when we look at that piece, you're wrong. I never made a claim about that piece. I never said a single thing about that, and I wouldn't. So, all of this, we get all the way down, and it comes through everything, and you get PolitiFax ruling on this thing. A video circulating on social media claims that a Danish study found that those mRNA things offer no mortality benefit. Well, I didn't claim that. That's what it found. That's like saying, this video allegedly shows somebody getting punched in the face and the video shows somebody getting punched in the face. There's no alleged about it. <laughs> this wasn't my claim. Um, that's just actually what the study found. This is an oversimplification that doesn't accurately reflect the preprint study, which was not peer reviewed. Oh, there's that old, th oh, it's not peer reviewed. We can't trust any of this stuff. So uh, <laughs> does not accurately reflect the preprint study, which was not peer reviewed. Dude, it's in Lancet. Come on, it's fine. Uh, researchers use clinical trial data to see how the different COVID-19 things reduce deaths from all causes. They found that adenovirus vector vaccines appear to protect against non-accident, non-COVID-19 deaths, while the mRNA things didn't have much of an impact. And they said more research is needed. The research didn't conclude that these mRNA thingies were ineffective at protecting people from dying of COVID-19. We rate this false. I never said that. I never said that they were in effect. I never said that. What I said was, what the researchers conclude, which was like, uh, they didn't find that they had an overall mortality benefit. That's just part of, that's actually what we know about the randomized controlled trials that were conducted by these pharma companies. That's a known fact. It's just, it's not even remotely debatable. It's not even up for fact checking. It's simply repeating and recasting the pharma company's own data in a more combined light where they put all the pieces together so they have enough data to see if there's a signal there. That's what the researchers did, and it definitely deserves more uh, study and all that. But can you rate this false? Nope, you certainly can't. So again, uh, Samantha, I, I just, she just, look, she just probably didn't know. Uh, it's a tough job, right? You got... You majored in uh, journalism and media studies. You don't have a strong science background. You got to dig in and make sense. We found out that, you know, the people that she reached out to for like to, to, to help rate this for her, she did a good job reaching out to a bunch of people. One of them was Pfizer. One of them, you know, was a, a variety of um, researchers and professors and things like that who obviously have a very strong interest in the main narrative and then came back with a fact check that, ta-da, supports the main narrative. What I'm trying to do is talk about science and results and understanding that there is no such thing as consensus science and that we're anywhere, anything but consensus around any of this stuff. I believe in free speech. I believe in the rough and tumble world of science and science inquiry. I believe that ideas take time to develop. I think that understanding takes time to develop. 
And I'm a huge, huge believer that we need to have free and open conversations, that freedom of speech is the most important thing we can have. But when you have fact-checking, self-describing fact-checking organizations who get the facts wrong and then rule that these things are false without having really the authority to be able to do that and also being dead wrong about that, that this inhibits us, this is not helpful to society, this is actually harmful that in the, in the scheme of things, a hundred people out there putting out bad conclusions based on their own bad read of science, it's just noise that goes away. But when you have an institution charged with and self-described fact checkers who are doing that poorly and doing it wrong, well, now you do have a problem on your hand because it that's what leads people astray more than anything. That's what sets science back. That's what holds progress back. And it's actually ethically and morally wrong. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.